I would like to share with you uh, some useful tools that uh, uh, will improve your development process when you are trying to communicate your React applications with APIs. So that's why this presentation is called RESTful Client Generator Generation. Um, so the idea is to cover the following uh, topics, uh, introduction, uh, a quick introduction of how the backend and frontend is currently uh, or usually uh, communicating things. Uh, what is the challenge here? Uh, what is open uh, API and Swagger? Uh, what is Orval, uh, the tool that we will help us to create this uh, automatic uh, code? Mm, I'm going to present a React example. Uh, I will show you also the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, tool, um, a possible improvements, and final conclusions of this. <clears throat> sorry, of these tools. Uh, okay, so first of all, I'm a web UI engineer. I have been working here for two years. Uh, I am from Cali, Colombia. Uh, I usually I try to um, practice photography when I am not coding. Uh, I am I am still learning about this. is is a little a little fun. So yeah, I like that. And okay, so let's start with uh, the first topic. The idea is <clears throat> to present you the current uh, state of a a common pattern that we follow when we create a a, a backend API. Uh, I would like to start with the the common approach that we we follow. For example, uh, in any cases when we create a backend, we have to create the models of the information. For example, as you can see, uh, typical models could be users, articles, uh, and so on. So the idea is <clears throat> uh, when you have created or when you have defined these kind of models, you have to translate that models to a front-end application. So imagine that we have a backend in any any language, for example, Java, Go, or other other different language. If you have a user model in backend, you have to tra translate uh, the same model in TypeScript code. Uh, if you are using TypeScript or uh, JS docs or any other locations, because uh, usually we want to keep the projects with a good documentation. So we try to uh, define these types uh, in the front end too. And when, if, for example, backend change uh, one property, we have to update this in the other side. And that is the, the pattern. Mm, OK, the idea here is to create um, a workflow to automatically generate these types and request handlers. Uh, so the developer uh, is not going to care about how to implement this logic. He, the developer will uh, focus only in the business logic and is going to use just the, the code that is generated uh, generated by, by this tool. Uh, great. So the challenge here, uh, I found that could be for the manual API generator. Generation, gener generation, sorry. The idea is that when we want to create this kind of contract between front and back end, we need a standard. And this standard could be, for example, Swagger or Open API specifications. So the, the first challenge here is how we could uh, keep these schemas uh, up to date. Uh, so don't worry, the, the idea is to use a uh, different tools that each language uh, has to um, automatically generate this kind of uh, uh, objects. The second the second challenge is the consistency across the applications. Uh, here, the, the idea is to have defined one single model, for example, in the front end, and use across all the applications. So uh, we are going to try uh, to avoid the duplicate um, type models. So the idea here is to use uh, the, the tool of Orval to generate a uh, centralized, uh, like, it's like a, a source of truth 
but for types. So we are going to use only the types generated by this by this tool. Uh, the other the other challenge is keep the client code sync with API. So we could um, work with these uh, tools using, for example, scripts or CI scripts in any GitHub action, for example, to uh, every time the API change, run a script to to update these these models. And to handle complex API interactions, uh, Orval uh, will help us to reduce this, this complexity because he is going to hide the implementations of the API calls and is going to expose only the, the function that we are going we are going to use. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first one tool uh, is open API. It's just a uh, specifications to define uh, how the API uh, an API is constructed for. So for example, if you create an open uh, uh, API, for example, in Java, you don't have to care about create this JARM uh, file or JSON file to define the, the, the schemas, because there is already tools that we will um, use your models and we'll transform that to uh, open API specifications. So we don't care about uh, update this manually. We usually create a uh, run a script. Uh, this will be uh, correctly created. We, this will this is going to be created uh, correctly. We just need to, for example, um, uh, find the correct documentation, how to use the tool, and and that's it. Uh, the other one is Swagger. Uh, open a, Open a API and Swagger is this uh, have the similar purpose. But the, the the shape of the JSON is a little bit different. However, we could use any of these uh, implementation in, in the backend. So these uh, tools are going to use just for the backend side because it's the first steps that is going to uh, help us to create this kind of automat uh, automatic process. And <clears throat> okay, so the next tool uh, that is going to use uh, we are going to use is is Orval. It's a, a library to, that we will run it on the client side. And that and that tool is going to take the JSON files or the JAM files uh, from the backend and it's going to transform that to a TypeScript code. That means that we are going to have the types definitions, request handlers, uh, with any implementations that we need. For example, Orval supports a uh, React Query, a uh, Fetch API, the, the common approach, and uh, other tools, for example, Axios, or other popular <clears throat> uh, libraries to communicate with APIs. So with this workflow, uh, for example, this is um, an example of, of this uh, for example, you can see this uh, code in the left side it is an example of a basic object, for, for example, for a user that is like a, a, a object with an ID and with a name. The idea is that we using this model, we are going to have uh, this automatic uh, TypeScript code generated by Orval. We have an interface or a type, and we have the um, implementation of the request handler. So developers uh, are going to use this function, and he is going to have all the um, results correctly typed according with the Swagger or OpenAPI specification. So it's very important to have the the these schemas up to date to to have this automate uh, this process correctly um, defined. Uh, so the the final result with this approach uh, we uh, will be like this. We have in the backend side we will need to expose an endpoint an endpoint sorry 
to provide the JSON schema, uh, it will be in Swagger or in OpenAPI format. This information is going to pass through Orval and Orval is going to create the, the, the schemas <clears throat> and the, the handlers. In front end, just uh, have to use this generated code. And I'm going to show you a little example of this. Uh, when I say that, you usually you don't you don't have to worry about how to create these um, open API or Swagger document uh, documents. It's because in H language there is H language we have uh, tools to generate these uh, these schemas. For example, uh, a simple project in Go you could use uh, libraries to generate generate these documentations. And for example, let me show you if I have defined a structure of uh, object here, for example, a user. Oh, you are not seeing my screen thing. We can, everything is uh, okay. You are seeing the, the code editor? Yes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> nice. And let's suppose that we are going to um, introduce a new field and this field will be a font. This, this could be done in any, any language. And with this change, we will need to, okay, this doesn't matter. Um, as you can see, we have co a, a little bit, a little comments here is, this is going to be used to generate the, um, uh, the JSON schemas. And we can, we can, we could run a, a command according with the specific language. For example, here is swag init. This is going to create the, the schemas with the new field and we could from this API. Okay, this is a, a very basic example of a small API. So let me show you how it looks like. Okay, this is an example of Swagger site. But the current API that I'm currently working is. Okay, so this endpoint uh, is generated automatically by the tool. So let's suppose that we have you are we are using Java or TypeScript. Uh, you you will find a uh, you will find a tool to generate this schema uh, so easy. So don't worry about that. Um, so in 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 that way, we could expose an endpoint to provide the JSON object according with the specification in this case is, is Swagger. So all of this code is generated by the tool. So uh, we are ready to use this to uh, generate the, the code in the front end side. So uh, for example, I add the phone property, we should be able to, to find that new property here, phone. Uh, in the same way, uh, here is an example of the front application. Is a React application I created with with Byte. Uh, we could, for example, create a script. Okay, to use this Orval, you you need to install the the library. Is called just Orval, for example. So you should run npm e. Orval, like this is a, a dev dependency. Let's add the D. And then you will need to create a configuration file that is going to specify where to take this schema. Uh, for example, I create this orval.config.cjs. 
uh, in the script will looks like like this. For example, you could add uh, any any name to the script, but important is to run orval uh, dash dash config and pass the the path to the config file. And finally, in in this file, you could uh, set a uh, a lot of properties. The the most important is where to take this uh, JSON object. So in this case, I pass this link that is my local environment, and uh, uh, this will this will work as the input of the of the information. And how is going to generate the types? You should you should be able to pass a different objects. For example, you want to create all the implementation of the request in one file and the type definitions in other file, like to have a H file in, in, in different modules, you could pass a uh, different parts here. And the client means that you could use, for example, in this case is a JAR query, but you could pass other properties like uh, fetch or other libraries that we use to call APIs. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the documentation of Orval, you will see that it works for other libraries too, the like spelt. But we could use this tool to generate, for example, sort uh, so objects to validate that the shapes is is correct or swr this is like an axis so you can define that here and you can run hooks for example if the code generated uh, you need to, um, to 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 correct the the format of the code you could run for example slint after this uh, script uh, so, so let's run this script, npm uh, run. The name of the script is generate client. Okay, so remember that we, we add a, a new property that is called phone. We could, we could uh, find that here. Uh, this is the definitions of the, for example, this, this folder is only for definition of types. And this other folder uh, is going to be, we, we don't have to touch this, this file, but it's just to, to show you what is created. It creates age, for example, we are using React Query, so it will create a uh, hook to use. For example, in this case, we only have an, one endpoint uh, according with the name of the path, uh, the tool is going to generate the name of the hook. For example, uh, we should find a hook, call it get users. Uh, for example, we could use use get users. This is a, like a wrapper function that is going to use React Query. So in, in this moment, we could use here, for example, this is a Empty, empty component that we could call, like we usually uh, use uh, a React query, but importing this implementation. So, so we could define a variable and call this this new hook. Just get used if this is generated by the application. So let's console log this for a second. And if we try this, again, we're going to is the we have to access to the information. And 
information is done. Uh, as you can see, we are document. We have all the response is already uh, defined. So we have, we don't worry about which property we are able to access because uh, that is the idea of these tools that provide us all the definitions of the response of the API. Uh, let's check this response is a little bit weird. Let's inspect this. Okay, the, the response here right now is, is an HTML. Uh, it should be a, a, a JSON, but we could uh, use a more complex examples. For example, we we have defined this uh, Swagger pet store example. So the for example, if you need to generate uh, all the models for this project that you can see we have a lot of endpoint, endpoints here. We just need to copy the URL where the JSON is. Uh, if you check this URL, you can say that you can see that all of this JSON is the Swagger specification for this API. And we just need to pass through the global config and run again the, the command. So you are going to see the difference here in the generate uh, folder. Great. So if you inspect, for example, the pet object, you can see that he's going, this tool is going to reuse all of other types to create more complex objects. <clears throat> and also the API is a little bit huge because each possible endpoints is going to be defined as a possible hook of React query. And we could use, for example, let's let's try use spread by ID. And for example, in this case, when you need to pass information to the API, we already have defined which uh, uh, information we need to 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 add. Uh, so let's if we check, for example, the Open API and uh, this Swagger, we can we can find that we could use, for example, in this case, we are using use uh, get pet. So to get a pet, we should pass a pet ID. And the pet ID is, in this case, uh, an integer, integer. So the idea here is to, to pass, for example, the ID, we should be able to. Let's see what happens. And the response. Okay, it seems like it, <laughs> the this pet API is is, is need is a uh, required a different shape of the of input, but the idea is to is to is to really on the schemas that we are storing in the in the backend side. Uh, in this in this way, we will uh, be able to to keep this this folder of generated code uh, updated. For example, every time that we push a new change in the backend, we could um, run a, a CI script to run this command and update this folder, and we will always uh, be aware of which type is updated or with other with which other uh, fields we need to to update and final example of this for example if you pass a different client 
<clears throat> let's suppose that we could pass sort in this case or we could pass sort yeah uh, if you if you don't know sort is a useful library to validate objects according with a specific shape mm -hmm. so then if we run this this command with so instead of React Query, we are going to have different different and uh, different code. So here we have defined a H object like uh, sub notations. So this is a very great uh, tool to optimize the time when we define these these objects. Uh, Great. So let's move on. Mm, the advantages of this, uh, of course, the time efficiency. The, we don't need to create code or create tickets, for example, to the new endpoint, because we already have that uh, when we run the script. The type safety, uh, safety is because we could use uh, a combination of the Type script definitions, or we could use uh, sort specific specifications to make this uh, type uh, strict. Uh, we could, for example, simplify the API API integrations because when the backend team update any field, we should be mm. uh, aware of what is. Changing, we don't need to ask, for example, which is the new field because all of this process is automatically generated and improve the documentation because to to use these workflows, we need to uh, we need to make sure that the backend side is updating correctly the Open API schemas and this or the Swagger JSON schemas. And the disadvantages is the limitation is in the customizations. For example, when you need to create <clears throat> a middlewares in the front end side or any a very specific uh, implementation during the request, you should uh, create a separate code, and that is a that could create a, a little bit of duplicating duplication code because you have implementations created by Orval and implementation create, created by yourself. So that's not a, a good thing. The other uh, disadvantage is that we have to, we depend on the API quality. If we have a service that the Swagger specification is not correct or the open API JSON is, uh, have a, a field that we don't support, this workflow is going to be deprocken. So it's a little bit fragile in this in, in that in that sense. Uh, yes. Do you have any questions so far? 